Two, SeaWorld Entertainment Parks just released their 2023 roller coasters, and in this video, I will give my thoughts on each and which I preferred over the other. Of course, I'm referring to Busch Gardens Williamsburg and their latest coaster, Dar Coaster, an intimate straddled seating family launch coaster, and SeaWorld Orlando's latest coaster offering, Pipeline the Surf Coaster, a B&M surf coaster. Before continuing, spoiler alert. If you do not want to hear the details about these two coasters, please stop watching the video now or skip ahead to the time on the screen to hear which I prefer. I'll see you there. Also, allow me to say that this is simply my opinion after riding each roller coaster one time. So after a few more rides on each, my opinion may change. And this is simply my initial thoughts. Okay, let's begin with Busch Gardens Waynesburg Dark Coaster. I was a huge fan of the dark ride that this replaced the Curse of Dark Castle, and was very excited to hear that the new indoor roller coaster that is using Dark Castle's existing building will be using the same theme. I mean, it makes sense. The building and the queue are already themed for you. The roller coaster opened to the public on Friday, May 19th, 2023, and I rode it on Saturday, May 20th, 2023. Let's begin with the positive. The coaster itself is a fine family coaster with straddled seats, so it's unique, which makes it an excellent addition to this year-round park. Winters in Williamsburg do get cold, so having an indoor coaster that can accommodate riders 48 inches and higher is a solid investment. I was not foolish enough to believe that I'd be walking into a themed roller coaster to the level of Guardians of the Galaxy in Disney World or Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts at Universal Studios, but I did hope for a little bit more than what I saw. Now, I have heard online that possibly more effects are working than what we're working on the opening weekend. As if I need it, but this gives me an excuse to ride it again. But this is my opinion of my initial ride through. First, I think the inside was too lit. One of the gimmicks of this coaster is that there's a switch track before going back into the loading station that has the coaster circle back around and go through the circuit twice. Knowing this going into the ride, it was lit inside enough for me to clearly see this illusion take place. Now, if you do not know this going in, would you not realize what you were seeing? I don't know. I just thought it was a shame that you could see what was going on. Speaking of the second time around, and again, this just may be my run through, but to not clue you in that you're on the same track, they basically just turned off the effects, which at that point only makes the coaster longer and does nothing for forwarding or enhancing the story in any way. Again, being a fan of its predecessor, Dark Ride, the story is really what's driving my opinion of this coaster, unfortunately. As far as the effects, there was a good one where you're going through a mouth, which also I heard looks better now, and some lighting, but that's really all that stands out. As far as cringeworthy, there's a part of this coaster where I believe three static statues get lit up as you go by, and at that moment, I thought to myself, oh my, they stopped at Spirit Halloween for some props. And I was immediately vindicated as I heard my son next to me laughing out loud about how badly it looked. <laughs> I am not certain what emotion those statues were supposed to instill, but laughter and feeling sorry because it looked so bad, I'm sure were not it. I can't tell you specifically why they looked as bad as they did. Maybe because they're just out there in the middle of nowhere with no scenery or background around them. Uh, it just did not play well. And the one thing I was hoping against all hope for was the line from the Curse of Dark Castle, you will never escape. You will never escape. To be reused as you pull into the station at the conclusion of the ride. I'm not sure if they still have the rights to that audio, but that would have been a great Easter egg for us fans of the dark ride. Overall, it's a fine enough ride, excluding Grover's Alpine Express. It's probably at the bottom of the Busch Gardens Williamsburg coasters for me. Uh, maybe it edges out Tempesto as I'm not much of a fan of the Skyrocket 2s, but not to leave Busch Gardens Williamsburg on a sour note, we did also do the Burgermeister's Hideaway Speakeasy experience at the park, and it was incredible. I highly recommend doing this experience. It was so much fun. It is an upcharge, but it's fun and unique and an experience that you cannot get anywhere else. Now on to Pipeline, the surf coaster at SeaWorld Orlando. 
This roller coaster opened to the public on Saturday, May 27th, and I rode it on Sunday, May 28th, 2023. I'm realizing just now that I rode both of these coasters on their second day of operations, which is simply a coincidence. Or is it? Let me say right out of the gate, I am a fanboy of the manufacturer of Pipeline B&M. Though that has no bearing on my thoughts of this coaster, I just wanted it to be known. This is the first implementation of this surf coaster model from B&M. This is not your typical stand-up coaster you may have ridden in the past where your head and some other areas get banged around. And that's where I'll begin my review as that's probably one of the biggest questions. Was it comfortable or was it painful? And I can say it was 100% comfortable. The comfort collar goes around your shoulders and you forget it's there. This new model allows you to bounce with the airtime and bounce you do. My feet were off the train multiple times during the ride and it was so much fun. It was also longer than I initially thought. And again, this is completely subjective just based on what I eyeballed the coaster to length to be by looking at it. This coaster has a height requirement of 54 inches, so it does not fall into that family category. And it also has a height restriction of 78 inches, so no giants either. I was also surprised at how well it was themed. There was sand, flags, palm trees, of course here in Florida, and copyright free beach sounding music. <laughs> At least I assume it was copyright free. It really made me want to go to a water park. And one of the smallest details, but I really thought was innovative and different was that they use coolers as the bins to store your loose articles while riding. If I could add just one more theming element, I would pipe in the smell of suntan lotion into the station area. That would just put it over the top. So the theming was wonderful. The ride experience was fun. As far as where I have it ranked in my SeaWorld Orlando coaster lineup, uh, Mako is number one and Pipeline fits somewhere amongst uh, Manta and Kraken, which are my number two and three. And depending on which one I rode last is the order they come in. I need to ride this many more times to definitively tell you where it lands and I'll enjoy every minute of it. Okay, for those who didn't want spoilers, welcome. And to everyone else, I think this is really just a formality. But in my opinion, after one ride through and acknowledging that the ride experiences may have been tweaked from the time I rode them, the clear winner for me is Pipeline the Surf Coaster. Everything from the ride experience to theming did not disappoint and I walked off with a smile on my face wanting to go back on. I would recommend riding both Dark Coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg and Pipeline the Surf Coaster at SeaWorld Orlando and form your own opinion. If you have ridden either or both of these, please tell me what your thoughts were in the comments. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video, and if you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing to the Vacationers Podcast YouTube channel. It would mean a lot. But that's it for now, so cowabunga dudes, and keep making memories.